I'm Professor Colin Thorne. I'm the Chair of Physical Geography at the University of Nottingham. Uh, this evening I've been uh, uh, invited along to discuss sustainable urban flood risk management. How can we effectively manage flood risk in our urban environments? Urban flooding presents particular challenges because uh, that's where most of the people live that are at risk of flooding and it's also where most of the key infrastructure is. And so we have to focus our attention on climate change adaptation to cope with what are going to be more frequent storms, uh, more severe storms and higher storm surges in our coastal cities. Um, We have to adapt our behaviours and our urban landscapes to cope with them. Urban environments require solutions that are not only effective but also productive because people in cities work really hard and infrastructure in cities has to work really hard too. So in terms of developing sustainable solutions, we have to have solutions that provide good uh, flood performance, but also solutions that provide other benefits as well, uh, benefits when they're not flooded. And that's a particular challenge for grey infrastructure, for big pipes uh, and deep channels. But it's well met by uh, green infrastructure, which does things like lower the urban heat island effect, improve air quality, improve water quality, as well as providing flood defence. And those sorts of solutions are much more sustainable in the long run. How can we manage flood risk in the future? The, the fact is that we've known um, that conventional approaches to flood defence to trying to wall rivers in or deepen them so deep that they never flood again or use bigger and bigger pipes to convey the water around. We've known for at least a decade that that isn't sustainable. And Flood Foresight showed us that and the Flood Risk Management Research Consortium showed that and the Flooding from Extreme Rainfall Research did that. What's disappointing is those messages haven't really got through. And so I think what needs to happen for us to move forward is a paradigm shift in thinking because the UK is at the absolute forefront of flood risk research nationally and internationally, but we're not at the forefront of putting that into practice. We can learn a lot from other countries um, who are frankly somewhat ahead of us, but also we can learn a lot from ourselves if we form effective partnerships between our universities, our uh, engineering consultants and our uh, governments at all levels from national to regional to local government. So I think for uh, the kind of sustainable resilience that we need we have to start shortening the gap between the generation of new knowledge and its uptake and put into practice. What one recommendation would you give to policymakers working to achieve sustainable flood risk management in the long term? Well, if if I was asked by policymakers, I suppose the one thing I would say is that they need to to listen a lot, um, think a lot and and maybe uh, uh, pontificate rather less because the geographies of flooding illustrate that every town and city is different. The, the flood problem comes out differently in each, each place. And when we talk about flood experts, I get quite cross if people say I'm a, f- I'm a flood expert. I'm not a flood expert. The people who live in Carlisle are flood experts because they've been flooded by 300-year floods in the last 10 years. They know a lot more about flooding than I do because it's been up close and personal and highly damaging. So when we talk about solving flood problems... Local people are the local experts and we need to listen to them. Now, they may not be experts in hydrology. Uh, They may not be experts in town planning. But they can tell us things that town planners and hydrologists can really use in coming forward with sustainable solutions. Things that those experts can cannot find out any other way. So if I had to say just one thing, it would be talk to the flood experts, the real flood experts, listen to uh, what their experiences are and learn from them. How can we use geographical evidence to better inform our decision making? Well, we have to recognise that flooding is intrinsically a geographical issue and any solution that's sustainable, any community that's resilient, 
uh, will have to recognise the geographies of flooding, and there are several. So some are quite obvious, but other ones maybe not quite so much. In the urban area where I'm focusing this evening, then clearly urban geography is important, and that means uh, the constructed landscapes that we build, the constructed environments that we build, which are in intrinsically geographical. It means understanding the communities and the neighbourhoods and the citizens and the human geographies of the reality of their lives and the decisions they make. But also it means recognising that floodable places, and there will have to be places that can be flooded without damage, because we can't keep the water in everywhere, those floodable spaces aren't flooded most of the time, thankfully. So what do we do with them the rest of the time? Well, they're places, and the geographical understanding of place tells us that we have to think very hard about who owns them, how they're used, who governs them, what they're used for, for the 90 or 95 or 99% of the time that they're not flooded. And frankly, we're just at the start of really thinking about that right now. So we have to look at the geographies of flooding and we have to integrate place and space and perception uh, together. Well, that's, that's the heart of geography. Can you tell me about the report that will be launched this evening? Yes, the, the Royal Geographical Society has brought together um, a, a team of geographers from a wide range of disciplines of, if you like, vernacular geographies to look at flooding in the UK. And this is really important because flooding isn't just a hydrology problem or a social problem or an urban problem or a rural problem. It's all of those things. It's not just to do with natural disasters. It's to do with governance and planning and with the decisions that we make about what sort of future we want. That's why this report's so powerful, because it's not confined by discipline or by code or by sector. It's a, 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 an integrated, holistic view um, that really does show the way forward for sustainable flood risk management in Britain.